Well, they didn't fucking make it! So here's what you get! Alright, first descent. It's Vampirella with the rubber deck. Homage cover after Frazetta. So this week's haul, I went to a dollar sale. Starting to get back into the flow. There was uh, quite a few weeks that I didn't even buy anything. But now uh, I've been spending like a madman. <laughs> when I mean madman, I'm talking about 20 bucks. <laughs> I know, a big spender. <laughs> but before we get to that, we gotta get to our two from the tomb. So this week's two from the tomb. Uh, really no, uh, <laughs> no rhyme or reason to it. Um, first up is The Authority vs. Lobo from Wildstorm and DC Comics. Uh, I always talk about uh, Simon Bisley's covers but I really don't show too much of the uh, interior stuff so I figured I'd uh, do a little quick flip through here so you could get a little taste of some of Biz's interior artwork which is uh, to me is some of the uh, some of the best artwork out there in the last couple of decades uh, I'm just a huge fan of the Biz uh, he's one of the few people I really want to meet that I will uh, actually lay down some cash to get some art or something done by him. Uh, it's funny you won't see too much of this kind of stuff in DC Comics. <laughs> That's cool, yeah. Homage is himself there with the uh, Lobo paramilitary. That's where I first started becoming a uh, Simon Bisley fan was that issue, actually. That was just the coolest thing back when we were younger, man. That, just reading through that issue. But uh, his Lobo is the Lobo, in my opinion. I don't think anybody can really draw him the Lobo better than uh, the Biz. Uh, he just brings that raw, just the rawness to it. But still being a good artist, like it's not like shitty looking. <laughs> we'll skip ahead a little bit here. See, there's another splash page we're going to take a look at. Not that one. But you could always tell. He was, yeah, for DC Comics, it was just like his artwork. And I'm, I'm assuming he had a big, big, uh, in, you know, saying how things went. <laughs> and then how our, uh, the, you know, the design and stuff of the, the character and the, uh, the atmosphere of the books. Yeah, you could always tell he rode the uh, <laughs> rode on the edge here a little bit. There you go. This is almost like a erotic cover, <laughs> especially with like pages like this. But yeah, this is uh, The Authority versus Lobo. Next up is, I see this book getting uh, trashed on many uh, channels, mostly the speculation channels. Uh, so I figured, you know, if you're going to trash something, at least say why, just not because it's not worth, you know, 100, 150 bucks or something. <laughs> That's the reason, main reason why these guys uh, trash it on these uh, speculation channels. Not that I'm you know, say anything bad about them or anything like that, but, I mean, if you're going to say something, at least open the freaking book. So, on this channel, we actually look into the books. We don't, uh, you know, just because it's not worth three figures, does this automatically make it a shitty book. It's a superhero book. It's an origin story. I actually bought this when it first came out. You know, you hear all kind of crap about it. Uh, it's one of those 90s books. Uh, the, my favorite one is uh, It's a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers ripoff. <laughs> uh, math is hard sometimes, but <laughs> I've actually heard that. Man. I was like, okay, man. <laughs> but uh, this is Dark Hawk. Uh, it's created by uh, Tom DeFelco and Mike Manley. Uh, I actually like Ma Mike Manley's art. But Danny Fingeroth wrote this this story, and it's just a basic superhero story. It's almost you know you could almost say it's like a paint by numbers uh, 
you know, Dark Hawk is Chris Powell, um, basically a working class kid. Uh, his dad's a cop. Uh, he's got two younger brothers. Mom's like, I guess, like a housewife. It's been decades since I've actually read this. Uh, I've read this issue again for the first time. And I was like, oh, I was like, because I keep hearing about it, like how much it sucks. And I was like, I don't remember it sucking that bad. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was just a, it was a superhero book. But of course, we start off with the Hobgoblin appearance. You always got to bring in a, a big time villain when you're starting off with a new, uh, new character. And this was a brand new character at the time. Everybody always talks about, oh, where's the original stuff? Where's the original stuff? Yeah, you know, some of the stuff you just gotta let play out, man. Uh, yeah, I went to the fifty issues, you know. But what if we went to one hundred fifty issues, different writers? You know, who knows who comes along, makes it big on that. All we get is just recycled characters now with different uh, people putting on the costumes. Then when they finally do give us new characters, everybody just shits all over them. So, but well, we see the hot glove, We got the mob boss. You know, the typical uh, stuff. This is set in Queens, New York, also. So, or is that Coney Island? I'm not sure. I'm not new, from New York, so the only thing I know about New York is uh, from the the movie The Warriors, you know, <laughs> and Escape from New York, yeah. <laughs> but it starts off, you know, Dad comes home, you know, he's mad because you know he can't bust all these criminals, and you know his, his oldest son Chris Powell there, aka Dark Hawk. Seen him de more his dad uh, basically giving up. He wants to do something. But then he's just a kid, you know, he's like but well, I can't remember how old he is in this, but he's like, hmm. Yeah, you know, say mid teens because he's watching his younger siblings there. But his buddies come over, yeah, you know, tell him the cause his mom tells him to watch the kids. Buddies come over and then, you know, how it goes. Out the door he goes. And then all of a sudden uh, he comes back home. The kids are missing. They don't know where they're at. And what do you do when the kids are missing? You go down to the local hobo and ask him where the hell they're at. <laughs> oh, man. Just some old comic stuff, you know. Like, there's always some homeless guy. I don't know what the hell that is about. It's like one of those comic uh, book things that uh, it's always about the homeless person, you know, knows everything. But anyways, uh, he goes to this, he figures out, oh yeah, the kids are probably at a fun house. Then he stumbles across, you know, dear old dad taking a, taking a bribe from the local mob boss. You know, and his dad gets all mad because he's basically getting called a, a punk. <laughs> so, of course, you know, the, the, the gangsters all find out the kids are watching it. The gangsters go after the kids. Then Chris Powell... AKA Dark Hawk here. Uh, finds the amulet and turns into Dark Hawk and a superhero is born. <laughs> He's like an android. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. I like the dark blues on this. That's why I was I, I totally forgot about all that. Just how they used a lot of blue on that. But it's a typical superhero origin story. It gets the two bad guys, and it's like, yeah, that last page is, yeah, the Hobgoblin is, I'll get you that, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and his dad takes off, and nobody knows where his dad's at. So. But like I said, it's not, it's a basically a, just a superhero origin story. I mean, nothing more you could ask for. I've watched it, and I don't really watch these channels either. They end up popping up in my feed. <laughs> and I'll be watching somebody else's video, and I'll be doing something. I'll have it on TV, and all of a sudden, their video, a different video will pop up. And I've seen it multiple times. Like, you know, <laughs> Dark Hawk 1. I'm telling you, folks, it's not that bad. But that's our two from the tomb. Two from the tomb went on for a little while there. I mean, Like I said, uh, this week's books, I got a bunch of uh, dollar books. We'll take a look at uh, what we got here. First up, we got Essential Vertigo Swamp Thing by Alan Moore. I believe this is issue one. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I picked this up, I own multiple copies of this book um, already. It reprints. I own the, you know, the original cop. The uh, Mr. Rigamortis, our good friend, was showing off his uh, some essential vertigo, vertigo swamp things. 
and I had had no idea that they reprinted those in black and white because I never bought them because I already had the original, so I had no reason to buy the reprints. But uh, as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh man, I definitely got to pick up the uh, at least get the uh, the first part with the uh, the anatomy lesson, which is this is what it's called here. Probably one of the greatest stories ever told in comic format. But I always thought like Swamp Thing would be a, a good candidate for getting the Conan the Barbarian magazine treatment where they reprint all the stories in black and white. I just always thought that would be cool. You know, they start with the Bernie Rice and Ben Wayne stuff, they move up to the, uh, the second volume. But yeah, I couldn't pass this up. I was so happy to get this for a cheap. Look at this, man. This is just really cool. But I'll probably this will probably be the only issue I buy of it. Cause like I said, I already own the other one. But uh, let's see here. What else we got? Oh, I picked up another copy of this. Killology. Alan Roberts Killology with Doyle on the cover. Um Take a quick look at this too. I already own a copy of this. But uh pick it up for a buck. So you can see it's yeah. some blood. <laughs> Get a little close up of this here. Let's see. The special Halloween one shot. I think there's another printing where the part is the tray dress is blue another one for the collection picked up another copy of this I'll probably end up giving this one away eventually it's a uh, Satan 6 guest starring Jason uh, I believe it's either the first appearance or what like the second appearance I can't remember what it is but finding it for a buck I believe it's yeah it's still sealed too so <laughs> Next up, we got the Amazing Spider-Man issue 359. It's the first cameo of Carnage. Probably one of my favorite characters in Spider-Man. It's uh, just love that red costume, man. Plus, <laughs> Cletus Cassidy's a freaking maniac. <laughs> but this is the uh, first cameo appearance. I think yeah, the first appearance is 361. So it's leading up to that. This is when I was collecting. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2. I had it on my pull list for a little bit in the 90s. So I have the, uh, already have the direct version. I don't have the the newsstand. Not that it really matters to me, but yeah, I just, I would have picked it up regardless because for a buck, you know, I wasn't going to leave it behind. But yeah, it's just good times reading those. Because I really didn't jump on Spider-Man until like the Todd McFarlane era and uh, the Eric Larson. I really like, I enjoyed that those two runs but but by the time I was already collecting it so I had a nice little run going of Amazing Spider-Man I just jumped off like right after that first I think it's issue 364 365 I was able to pick up Detective Comics issue number 740 with the Batman issue 497 homage cover with uh, Bane breaking the Joker's back Kelly Jones <laughs> pretty cool looking <laughs> but the steal of the day was Batman Detective Comics issue 737 I believe this is the third appearance of Harley Quinn or the third appearance in continuity <laughs> but who gives a crap I paid a buck for it and uh, it's got the old school Harley on there 
choking at the hunters. <laughs> Next up, we got some Curse of Spawn. Found issue number one for a buck. Issue number nine. Issue number 22. So this we've got some Dwayne Turner art in here. I haven't really heard too much about him lately. I mean, lately. It's been when this came out like 1999, I forget. Yeah, like 1998, 1999, let me see. Yeah, 98. Yeah, he definitely cut from the cloth of uh, McFarlane and Capullo. Like the, I believe this is the first appearance of uh, yeah hatchet hatchet spawn <laughs> Didn't, there was a couple more that I wish I would have picked up now but I can always go back and get them there I don't think too many people collect these anyways but yeah the Dwayne Turner art on here is just really good we looked at his uh, 22nd issue in <laughs> Might as well look at uh, the first issue. I can't wait to read it. I want to read this. Uh, I just don't see myself trying to collect another <laughs> run it unless I build it through the dollar bins, of course, which I've done for a lot of series. Like I said, I don't think uh, too many people are going out of their way to buy this run or trying to put it together. Hell, I don't even see it on most channels. <laughs> uh, next up, able to pick up uh, Jim Balint, Terror of the Witch. Terror Witch of the Black Rose, issue 133. Uh, I actually didn't pay a dollar for this one. <laughs> paid uh, $4.25 for this one. But it was uh, well worth it. <laughs> uh, last book I picked up, this was actually back in the dollar bin here, is uh, Sham Comics. It's a uh, Golden Age Classics with a warp perspective. So it's basically, they're basically reprints, and for a dollar, I couldn't pass it up. That's just your typical Golden Age stuff. Shamarama. It's like, don't smoke weed, kids. <laughs> For a buck, we'll take it. <laughs> so that was my dollar plus <laughs> plus one that was uh, cover price or twenty five cents over cover price. <laughs> it snuck in there, so we'll, we'll keep it. Uh, I'll make a good uh, thumbnail. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's what we'll go with this week. 